another one of the older videos that still gets a good number of views is video number 7 where I built a Loconet Wi-Fi throttle using a next-gen display. That was working quite well, but as I concluded at the end of the video, not worth pursuing. Today I am going to show you what I think is the smarter concept. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. At the end of video number 7, I expressed my opinion that I think the way to go is using cell phones as throttles. They obviously have a convenient size for handheld device, as well as broadly accepted ergonomics. Furthermore, people are used to use it all day long and feel comfortable using the touch screen to click on buttons and sliders and more. And best of all, when people come to your home for an operating session, they typically all bring their own phone, so there is no need for you to provide a throttle for every train operator, at least if we could make the phone look and feel like a real throttle. As far as I can see, available cell phone throttles have significant limitations in that respect. And that might be the main reason why there is still a market for handheld throttles. Check for yourself, there is a good list of Wi-Fi connected throttles for the smartphone on the JMRI webpage. The link is in the description below. To me, the requirements for a smartphone based throttle would be something like this. It should be implemented as a web app with no installation required on the smartphone. People should be able to come to an operating session, load a web page into their browser and be able to control a train. When done, no application or data should remain on the phone. There should be no limitation regarding number of throttles that can be added to the system. Well, there is always a limit given by any system but it should be high enough that it does not bother you in a typical use case. The software should be simple to maintain for the session host and running on cost-effective infrastructure, possibly without a computer. And there should be a possibility to add physical input elements, in particular a rotational knob, which is not typically found on a smartphone device. Let's start with a look at the required infrastructure. Like in video number 7, I am using the Loconet to MQTT gateway to feed Loconet commands to Wi-Fi and distributing them to all Wi-Fi devices using MQTT as communication protocol. This technology basically extends Loconet to the Wi-Fi network and therefore to as many smartphone throttles as you want. As recently explained in video number 48, MQTT requires a so-called broker which directs the messages between all attached nodes. This can be a public broker somewhere in the cloud or you can install a small computer device, for example a Raspberry Pi and run your own broker which makes you independent of an active internet connection. The final missing piece is a software called Node-RED, which can deliver the throttle functionality to the smartphones. Node-RED can either run on the Raspberry Pi as well, or on a separate computer somewhere in the network. So that's all that's needed as general infrastructure on the layout side. Also in video number 48, I did a proof of concept for implementing a smartphone throttle in Node-RED. If you check that video, you see that it worked, but the look and feel was poor and there was another limitation that I pointed out. Node-RED is a single user program, which means that it is not possible to define a throttle with Node-RED components and then run it on several smartphones in parallel, because they would all work with the same data from the server. So if a user would assign a locomotive to the throttle, it would be assigned to all the other throttles simultaneously, which is useless. The workaround at the time was running Node-RED independently on each phone, but that would obviously violate my requirement of not having to install anything on the user's smartphone. 
Luckily, I found a better way, and that is using the Node-RED HTML template component. This is basically a small web server and it can hold a local set of data. And it supports JavaScript, CSS and everything else that is needed to program a web app. So what I did is just a simple flow that looks like this. A node to receive Loconet commands from the broker. Then the MQTT string gets passed into a JSON object, which is handled in the simple throttle node. The optics of the display, like colors or font sizes, is controlled by the definitions in the CSS node. If any command needs to be sent to Loconet, it is done using the MQTT output node on the right side. That's it. All functionality is encapsulated inside the simple throttle node. There we find the HTML elements for the various buttons, text display and the speed slider. And in the JavaScript section we find all the functions needed to make the throttle work, receive input from MQTT and send commands to Loconet. All in all the code is, is little more than 800 lines, so I do not explain it in detail, but as usual I make the entire flow available on my GitHub page, so you can look for yourself and you can simply import it into your Node-RED and use it. To load the throttle on the smartphone, you just open the browser and key in the address of the Node-RED server, which is the information you need to give your operators. The URL consists of the IP address of the Node-RED server, followed by the port number, normally 1880, and slash UI for the user interface. Once the user enters this in the browser, the throttle opens. Of course, you can also load it from a tablet or a regular computer. On a smartphone it is also possible to define a shortcut that automatically starts the browser with the correct URL. The throttle allows you to assign up to four locomotives concurrently and the assigned addresses are displayed underneath the speed display. NA indicates that no locomotive is assigned to that slot and the radio buttons allow you to switch between the locomotives. Of course the display will always show speed, direction and function statuses of the current locomotive and if no locomotive is selected the buttons will be disabled. To open the loco selection dialog simply double click the respective radio button. When entering a new address for selection the status is immediately displayed so you can see whether the locomotive is available or you have to steal it from another throttle. The various dialog buttons get enabled or disabled based on the options you have available for that particular locomotive, just like on any other Digitrax throttle. To select click assign and the address is displayed next to the radio button. Now you can use the slider to change speed or the buttons to change direction and functions. What I like the most is that on a smartphone there is a short vibration feedback every time a function button is activated or the speed changes on the slider. So far so good. This is a working smartphone throttle for Loconet that works without installation. It can be opened from any smartphone in the network without any limit to the number of concurrently open instances. But what about that knob we are all looking for? Glad you asked. Here is a small T-bone device that can be attached to the smartphone. Or maybe better, the smartphone can slide into it. Then you insert an IoT stick on the backside, configure it as black hat and pair it with the cell phone. And there it is, your real knob, smartphone based Loconet throttle. As you see, this is just the first working prototype, so I will wait until the next video for a closer look inside and an explanation how it works. If you don't want to miss that, I'd recommend you subscribe to the IoTT channel and click that bell icon so that you will have a premium seat when that video comes out. Also, if you like what I showed you in this video, please click the like button below. 
Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general, because YouTube likes the likes. And that's it for today. Time for me to go back to the development bench and make sure I will have some more stuff ready to show you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.